كثير من نجواهم إلا من أمر بصدقة إلا من أمر بصدقة أو معروف أو إصلاح بين الناس ومن يفعل ذلك ابتغاء مرضات الله فسوف نؤتيه أجرا عظيما ومن يشاقق الرسول من بعد ما تبين له الهدى ويتبع غير سبيل المؤمنين نوله ما تولى ونسله جهنم وساءت مصيرا إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء ومن يشرك بالله فقد ضل ضلالا بعيدا إن يدعون من دونه إلا إناثا وإن يدعون إلا شيطانا مريدا لعنه الله وقال لأتخذن من عبادك نصيبا مفروضا ولأضلنهم ولأمنينهم ولآمرنهم ولآمرنهم فليبتكن آذان الأنعام ولآمرنهم ولآمرنهم فليغيرن خلق الله ومن يتخذ الشيطان وليا من دون الله فقد خسر خسرانا مبينا يعدهم ويمنيهم وما يعدهم الشيطان إلا غورا أولئك مأواهم جهنم ولا يجدون عنها محيصا Glorious Quran May Almighty Allah accept it as an act of Ibadah uh, please gentlemen, brothers and sisters, this uh, program we are listening to now, uh, it is now on the, they are, they are taking it live on the Facebook, courtesy of uh, South Lehuda TV. Uh, we have to appreciate his lordship, the chief judge of uh, Sokoto State, for taking the bulk of our Ramadan activities. We appreciate uh, his lordship. May Almighty Allah reward him abundantly. And apart from him, there are so many eminent people among the members who support Ramadan activity. They are too numerous for me to mention. May Almighty Allah reward them abundantly. Uh, let me just use uh, this opportunity before the commencement of the lecture proper to remind our member of ongoing registration for the conference. 
of Mulan, which is coming up on the second day of uh, May 2024. Please, member, I encourage uh, at the Ibadan. Member, I encourage to try as much as possible to register. Presently now, people from uh, Kaduna, about 11 people have registered. Kano, they are about 34. Kebi, they are about 11 register for the conference. But Sokoto, we have only two register. We are three, Thank God. Thank God. So please, let us try as much as possible to register for the conference. For the for a, for a previous conference, we Sokoto are the one leading. We are a large delegate, more than Kano, more than Kaduna, more than Abuja. So this time around, we should try as much as possible. Uh, at this junction, I will hand over the microphone to the chairman of the public lecture so that he can invite the guest lecturer to commence. And I want us to try as much as possible to pay attentive. Please, sir. This conference I mean to start the lecture. Please, sir. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فسبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا مبعوث للعالمين رحمة على آله وصحبه ومن سلك سبيلهم بإحسان وسلوك إلا يوم الدين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. It is my humble pleasure to find myself in the midst of great luminaries, great learned scholars, especially the Mulan Muslim Lawyers Association of Nigeria for the first time in life. In Sokoto to come and uh, give a kind of small nasiha because I don't call it a lecture. I am in the midst of scholars that knows the pros and cons of what we are coming to discuss. So therefore I'm not coming to tell you something new about which perhaps you don't have knowledge about it. It's just for an interest that you want to see a new face perhaps which you've never seen before. But I'm sure I'm not a new face to many of you here. <laughs> So <laughs> don't expect me to tell you something new from what you've not had or what you've not read or what you've not been doing the, on the part of the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this very precious month of Ramadan. The month which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that uh, it is in it that he revealed the glorious Quran to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Lawal Mahfuz to Bayt al Izza, and it continued to be revealed for a period of 23 years. And when you calculate 9 months, 11 days out of it, it gives you 22 days, 22 years, 22 months, and two, 2 weeks. So this was the period that the glorious Quran was revealed to the Prophet. Why are we here? This is the question that we need to ask ourselves. First and foremost, as Muslims, we have been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to believe in the five cardinal pillars of Islam. One, in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the monotheism. Two, to pray in five daily prayers. And three, to also fast during the month of Ramadan as a covenant between a human being and his Lord. Four, is perhaps to give the zakat if you have it, if you own the nisab and lastly to perform the pilgrimage to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Mecca. The lecture title is going to embody three aspects. The last ten days, one, its significance, two, and the impact that is going to shower on us. So when we talk about the last ten days of the Ramadan fast, you know that when you count the month of Islam, we have 12 months in the Islamic calendar. But right from the onset, when you go back to chapter 9, verse 36, 
as said by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in iddata shuhur inda Allah is now ashra shaharun fi kitab Allah yawma khalqa samawati wal ard minha arbaatun hurum that verily the numbers of months in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right from the beginning of the heavens and earth are twelve and there are four selected ones among them so out of these twelve months is Ramadan fast for the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to get them closer and attached to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make them humble themselves before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to take a covenant between them and Him in the hidden and in the public everyone has a right to say that he or she is fasting but rather he or she can go into his, his minute room and take water or eat and then come out and then show himself that he's fasting. I think I'm right. But rather, what we decided to do is to be steadfast in that very covenant between your love and yourself. So therefore, we see Ramadan fast as the third cardinal pillar of Islam decreed in the second year of the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Medina, the radiant. It is a month that rekindled the universal message of Islam with the revelation of the ultimate miracle that is Al-Quran when we go back to Quran chapter 2 we've been told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after saying that Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya ayya allazina amanu kutiba alaykum shiyamu kama kutiba ala allazina min qablikum la lakum tatakun ayyaman ma'duda faman kana minkum maridan aw ala safarun fa'iddatu min ayyamin ukhar وعلى الذين يضيقون فدية طعام مسكين فمن تطاف هو خير الله وأن تصوم خير لكم كم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان that is the main point we are to I want to talk about that this glorious Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan to serve as a clear proof among all proofs meaning there were those books that were revealed by before Quran so for Ibrahim Musa Torah, Injil, and others. But Al Quran come to distinct between the true and clear proof and the false hood. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us as well that uh, we were not the first generation that the decree of Ramadan fast was promulgated upon. Past nations, like that of the Jews and the Christians, had also what? Had also been. Um, told to fast or ordered to fast just like we did but in what manner and in what circumstance do they used to fast that is best known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we are told by Allah himself that وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَفَّةَ لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا that is the universality of the message of Islam we have not sent you except to the universal uh, mankind that you become a glad warning unto, uh, um, a glad tiding unto them about the reward of Jannah and uh, a warner against the hellfire but still the bulk of mankind do not know and that is why up to now many are not yet Muslims and he also told it in another verse وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ we have not sent you except a mercy unto the entire world. But the Muslims and the Christians, the pagans and others are all under the what? The rahmah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why Allah told us in the second to the last verse of Surah At-Tawbah that لَقَدْ كَانَ لَقَدْ 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 جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِنْتُمْ حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم فإن تولوا فقل حسبي الله ولا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is such a messenger and a prophet that is merciful to his own nation, a merciful to his own people that he doesn't want something that will afflict them of hardship. He Allah سبحانه وتعالى told us that ما ما يريد الله بكم يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر Allah means isn't it for you. It does not mean hardship for you. That is, that is why he said, I am a man do that. Just they at fingertips days to be counted. 
ask yourself today what's Ramadan are we today 27th barely three days today end of the Ramadan fast ask yourself when did we start the Ramadan fast just like yesterday just like yesterday so when you recount all these you realize that out of 12 months you have 11 months to eat to drink to do whatsoever you like both in the daytime and in the what in the night hours but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now saying that okay spare some precious time for me as a test and I shall reward you with gentle for those that is the end of it then the very gate you are going to enter through it to the Jannah in that day is going to be a VIP gate known and called as a Rayyan. Nobody enters through that gate to the paradise except those that what? That fast. In order to show you that all actions and acts are for human beings themselves, but that of the fast is meant for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, As Salmuli wa an ajzibi. Fasting is meant for me, and I'm the only one that will what? That will reward for it. The reward of fast in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to bless you with Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our final about to be Jannah for those. Apart from that, apart from testing your spiritual spirituality, the social, economic, and all other aspects, politically, when you look at it, Ramadan fast embodies it. Why? Because we start the Ramadan fast globally, and we also end globally at the same time, inshallah. So, it is a month meant to unite the Muslims. It is a month meant to show the world that Muslims are one. It is a month to show that Muslims have one leadership. It is a month to show that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spared a month that he will show his own mercy, forgiveness, and emancipation from hellfire. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in one of his hadiths, one Anchanja Jibril alayhi salam visited him. And he said, I'm going to utter some supplications now. All I requested from you is to say Amin. The three supplications are one whosoever is being mentioned by you and had had Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and the Nusra sallallahu alayhi wa may Allah cast him from what? From the Jannah. He said Amin. Whosoever meets his own two parents alive and could not secure the Rama of Allah to enter paradise through the one means of day, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cast him away from Jannah. He said, Amen. And the last is that whosoever witnessed the Ramadan fast and could not get the Rama of Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cast him away from the Rama of Allah. He said, Amen. We pray unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us about among those that are going to have the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then enjoy the reward of our own deeds. I'm sure, brothers and sisters, what I'm saying now has already been said during the previous lectures. But I'm just trying to re-echo the emphasis of the last 10 days as you requested for me to speak about. So therefore, I'm not going to waste much time about discussing what Ramadan fast is. We all know the definition of Ramadan fast. Am I right? Yes. So we don't need to go to that primary level now to ask about what is Ramadan, its literal and technical meaning. But what are we expected to get within these 10 days? Or what are we expected to do within the remaining three days? Embodies the Rahmah of Allah, that means the means and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to descend on the Ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We've seen that, didn't we? In the beginning of the month, it was a scorching sun. But what happened? It rained in some of the what, neighboring states. And we were able to what? We were also able to enjoy from the cold of the what? Of those very rains. Wasn't it? It was part of the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he showered upon us. 
The middle of Eid is the forgiveness of Allah during the day and the night of Eid. And we expect ourselves to be among those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive. The last segment is the emancipation from the what? From the road of the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never let us to see even the fire take us of entering into it. So, but there is a scholar that is quoting this hadith saying that the hadith of the Prophet is saying that the hadith is divided into three is not an authentic hadith. Why? Because of his own reason for saying that is that the entire month of Ramadan fast is full of the mercy, forgiveness and emancipation every day. I hope you are getting my point. That is his own view. He said it is a month that is full of mercy, forgiveness and what? Emancipation. So it is not going to be and as an aspect of saying the first 10 days is full of the masses of, masses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while the second 10 days is for the forgiveness and while the last one is for the emancipation from the fire and fire so he holds that view if you've not forgotten my brothers in Islam I tried to read for you and to your hearing the promulgation of Ramadan fast which is contained in chapter 2 verse 183 184 185 and 186 this chapter this verses let me cut off just islam to you oh, look around it's my pleasure having my imam around me uh, beside me so I'm, I'm now very safe even if i astray you will now try to correct me you are welcome i feel very on, very on ease sitting in the midst of lawyers you know even the chairs we are sitting on are meant for the judges not like myself <laughs> obviously when i look at them i see that like i'm in the court <laughs> so that's just it all right i hope i'm going to make my presentation safely and be bailed out to go home safely afterward yes inshallah um the aspect of which i have not touched it's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Shahru Ramadan al-lazhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an huda lil-nasi wa bayinati min al-huda fa man shayda min kum al-shara fa liyasumhu fa liyasumhu fa man shayda min kum al-shara fa liyasumhu yuridu Allahu bikum yusra wa la yuridu bikum al-usra wa litukum lal-iddata wa litukabiru Allah ala ma adakum wa la lakum tashkurun wa iza sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb this is where we are coming now فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ وَجِيبُ الدَّعْوَةَ الدَّعِي إِذَا دَعَاءِ فَلْيَسْتَبُوا جِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَا اللَّهُمْ يَرْشَدُونَ The entire aspect of the Ramadan fast for the result is to have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the test that has now tested you not to drink, eat, conjugate not to look at the haram during the daytime even during the night hours to spend some hours of yours in the recitation of the glorious Quran, to be steadfast in, in, in prayers, to read the Quran properly, and to be charitable as well. Because in one of the ahadiths of the Prophet, we were told that the Prophet is the most generous, generous person in the entire world, that he gives out just like the wind used to blow. Ask yourself, quantify the, the wind that, it, that blows by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the tariff of Nepal today. If you are to buy the wind that you now inspire or respire into your body to, to keep you alive, and you are told by the body that regulates the wind that each card now per unit is going to be 2,000 naira, how many of us are going to live in this world today? <laughs> the query in these days is what is coming out from Nepal that they have increased Nepal tariff, isn't it? Look at the wind, how it is blowing. Free! Look at the bad. Which of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will you deny? So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, fast for me for one month, 
then you should even be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for selecting you among those that are alive and are fasted up to this moment. In the last segment of the Ramadan fast is where we have one good night, the night of majesty, the night of decree, the night of power, the blessed night, which in it we were told that is equivalent to what much better than in the sight of Allah than 1,000 months. And uh, a scholar calculated the 1,000 months to mean 83 years, 4 months in the sight of Allah. How many of us here today can attest to the fact that we are going to live for 80 years to come? Nobody. But out of the magnanimity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He decided to spare one night for you to get that reward. Who can tell me the rationale behind getting the, the, the night of Qadr? Okay. It was said that one time, as contained in Turat al Nasheen of Imam Hassan, Osman bin Hassan al Shakiri, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was talking to the Sahaba, telling them about the previous nations of the Jews, that there will happen to be one person who carries his sword in the daytime for sixty good years non-stop, and in the night he will continue to pray to Allah subhanahu wa taala. They say, "Oh, the Prophet, how can we get such a, a reward in the sight of Allah? After all, our years are short." Then Allah revealed. Surah Al-Qadr to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam giving them the gift of that very night Inna anzannahu fi laylatul qadr wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr laylatul qadr khayrun min alf shahr tanazzal al-malaikat wa al-ruhu fiya bi idhni rabbihim min kul am salamun hiya hatta matla il-fajr I'm sure for those of you that spent part of the night yesterday will attest to the fact of what I'm saying and it has transcended to this morning as well. It was cloudy, isn't it, my chairman? So, Alhamdulillah, you and I. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you and I can now say, Alhamdulillah, we were part of those that this year have witnessed the night of the power, the night of the creed. Unless I'm undachi. No government will ever give you a salary of 83 years to say, okay, free of charge, go. No government. But he, the creator, has given you one night to give you a reward of 83 years, four months. Why shouldn't we be grateful unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that? Allahumma zidna wa la tanqusna wa akrimna wa la tuhinna wa atina wa la tuharrimna. So, to continue, in order to be able to achieve the goodness of this very last 10 days of Ramadan fast, although it's about ending, and the precious part of it is about, have, might have been witnessed yesterday night, nevertheless, you still have some days to go on. The Prophet told you that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Man sama radmadana ina iman wahtisaban ghufra lahu ma taqaddama min zambi. Whosoever fast, the Ramadan fast for the sake of Allah with faith and sincerity, Allah is going to forgive him of his own past sins. Waman qama laylatul qadr iman wahtisaban as reported by Aisha radiallahu anha, ghufra lahu ma taqaddama min zambi. Allah is going to forgive you your past sins as well. May Allah forgive us. All of us here are sinners. كل ابن آدم خطاء وخير الخطائين التوابون. All the sons and the sons, the progenies of Adam are all sinners, except those that repented. The base of the sons of Adam in the sight of Allah are those that repent. So may Allah make us among those that repent unto Him. What are we expected to be reminded about? in the month of Ramadan is the revelation of the glorious Qur'an. Shahr al-Ramadan al-lazi unzla fi al-Qur'an. And this revelation of the glorious Qur'an tells you the rekindling of the message of Islam to humanity. Isn't it? 
Yes, because it is the guidance given to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the inimitability of the own miracles of Allah. Why? لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل من حكيم الحميد This is a book that cannot be distorted from its before it neither at the back of it it is a revelation from who? تنزيل من حكيم الحميد from the all wise and the all praise So if you want to see the ultimate miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam see the Quran You see, with regard to the night of Qadr that I was talking about, I came across a video clip which is now in my handset. I would like to share it later on with one of you. A great professor, a Western great professor, who is a researcher, said he was contemplating about Islam and especially the Ramadan fast, more especially about the night of the Qadr. Then he said he took it upon himself to come and carry out a research about it. What is so special about the night of the Qadr? They say one night he decided throughout the last 10 nights, he decided to place his own telescope and zoom in directly to the Kaaba to see some wonderfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the course of that, on the 27th night, there occurred a miracle for him or to him. What did he say? He said, I saw a beam of light right from the horizon of the heaven down to the Kaaba. And he said, based on that, I decided to accept Islam. Because he knows that what Allah has spoken about the Quran is not a lie. Look at it. It is a night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to decree in it everything. إنا أنزلنا في ليلة مباركة إنا كنا منذرين فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم أمر من عندنا إنا كنا مسلمين. Look at it. It is in it Allah has already budgeted yesterday that the chairman maybe this year this coming year is going to marry two three more wives of Mulan. I'm sorry, maybe I just it's just an example I'm giving. So that I don't go and find it difficult to wipe it. <laughs> yes. That my Imam will be the chief Imam of Sokoto in the near year to come. All these have been calculated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why, in a nutshell, in the spirit of the Prophet, when he was asked by his beloved wife, Aisha, Oh the Prophet, what do you tell me? to say of a supplication if I happen to witness the signs of that great night. He didn't say, supplicate to Allah to give you more money, more wealth, more houses, more this and that. But Allahumma inna ka'afoon ibn afafafan. Oh Allah, forgive my sins, erase them, let me not see them in the day of judgment. It's not like a prosecutor come to the court. Before the liminaries, written all sorts, right and right and right. Nobody is here except the judge and the prosecutor. Even the accused is not hearing what has been said because there is a barrier. Then after this, okay, you hereby educate that you are free from all accusations, you can go. Isn't it the case in the courts? When an accused is said you are free and you can go, how do you feel? Put yourself in that box. What do you call that box? Accuse you. Uh, eh? Dock. The moment you enter into your court and you have been docked, Subhanallah. May Allah forgive you. That Allah SWT means is That's why He said we should seek for His own forgiveness. When He forgives you, everything is over. So, what are we expected to do within this night? The hardship. Pray, be, be more prayerful to, the, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Askar, waskurullah, zikran, kasira. Wasabihu, bukratam, wasila. So let us have much time dedicated and devoted for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within these days. Moreover, we supplicate because it is a month of what? Of supplication. Lissa'im da'watin la turat. For he who fasts, has his own prayers accepted without being what uh, kicks back onto him. 
And in the end of Eid, the Prophet sallallahu said, "Lisaim farhatan, farhatun in the iftar, wa farhatun in the liqai rabbi." For you as a Muslim that fast, you have two times to enjoy. The first is when you break your fast. How do you feel? Oh, the scorching sun, everything is gone with the cold water, the tea, the maltina, the apple, the this, the this, and this. The fried chickens. I don't think I have eaten chicken within the month this time around. So don't, don't blame me for that. But Alhamdulillah for the cold water. That was a day an ice block was sold for 1,000 Naira in this very city of ours. 1,000. I was just imagining myself. Just ice water. And because we are fasting. Can you see? Can you see the wisdom behind it? That Allah SWT spare you for a living month to drink throughout the day. If you like, you take minerals. If you like, you take this and that. But for somebody to sell a water that will cool your intestine for you, he's selling it at the rate of 1,000 for you. No mercy. That we need to give more sadaqah in this month. It is not yet over until it is over. Thank you very much. So we want to see that you've increased in your work, in your sadaqah, in your charity to the needy and the poor. To those that ask and those that do not ask, Lisaili wal maharum. Wafi amwalikum, wafi amwalim hakul lisail wal maharum. There is a portion in the, in the what? In the money or in the wealth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you to those that ask and to those that did not give a request for it. Part of what is recommended in this very last segment of the month is the etikaf, seclusion in the what? In the mosque, especially the Jumu'at mosques. So that one Jumu'at form within those days, then you can be able to perform the Jumu'at in that very mosque. But for now, if you want to start today, to the end of Ramadan, you can go into five daily prayers mosque and then go and perform your work, eight kaf. Eight kaf means to subject yourself to a given mosque, nothing but the recitation of the glorious Quran, as God praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking for his forgiveness. That's just it. Throughout the night, or some substantial part of the night because you can hardly make it throughout the night that is why even Allah SWT told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that inna rabbaka ya'lamu annaka taqumu adna min sulisa yillayn wa nisfahu wa sulisa wa ta'ifatun min al-lazina ma'an wallahu yuqaddiru al-layla wa al-maha so itikam is very important let me dwell on it a little bit you know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is very inquisitive about showing his ummah ways of attaining the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the first time, when he wanted to go for the seclusion, he started right from the first day of the Ramadan fast, as reported by Umm Salama. So he secluded for 10 first days, and not like the little God in need. When he was about to leave the mosque, and Jinnah Jibreel alayhi salam came to him that, where are you going? He said about eight kaf, Abu Kunufa. He said it is not yet time, but he refused to disclose to him the time. He said it is forthcoming. So in, in teaching methodology, we call this as a discovery method. But in the lawyers, Abu uh, methodology, what do you call it? If you want somebody to go and find out something himself, inquiry method. Good. It's almost the same thing. They were using interchangeable, you know, languages. So. <laughs> He refused to tell him that the night of Qadr will occur so and so so days, or so and so so night. The Prophet Sallallahu now told the remaining Sahaba that whosoever is interested in the eight kaf and the Layla to Qadr should come back to the mosque again. They came back to the mosque and spent another 10 days, making 20 days. Am I right? Then he left the mosque. 
And Jesus Jibreel alayhi salam confronted him again that it is not yet over until what it is over. The night you are looking for is not yet around. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said in that very hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed me about the night of the cuddle but I have forgotten it. However, I have dreamed that we are going to pray and have it in the night that it will rain. And we are going to pray in the rain until our four years are wet with marks. Then, according to the narration of Umm Salama, it occurred during the 21st night of the, what? Of the Ramadan fast. But based on the hadith reported by Ibn Abbas and others that is more famous, the night of Qadr used to occur during the night of the 27th night of Ramadan fast. The Lord should be welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. MashaAllah. Thank you, my senior advocate of Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Yes. I can see you smiling when I say senior advocate of Nigeria. Eh? I think I'm right. So, mashallah. That's very good. So, that is why even the Saudi are of the opinion that the night of Qadr used to fall on the night of 27th uh, day of Ramadan. And I can bet you that, alhamdulillah, based on what we've seen of the sciences yesterday, then yesterday was the night of the Qadr of this year. We may not know, inshallah, we may not know of the next year when it's going to fall. But what is the wisdom behind hiding the night of the country? Is for you to be steadfast in your word, in your supplication, devotion, and prayerful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within the, 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 the ten days. Why? Because we are talking about the ten days. The significance of the ten, ten nights of the Ramadan fast. And... To give you a condition, when you are in the eighty cup, he said, "Ohilla lakum leilatul siyam rafasu ilan nisaikum, huna libasu lakum antum libasu lakum. Alim Allah an lakum kuntum taqtanuna anfusakum fatabu alaykum. Fal ana bashruf unhun wa tabu ma kitabu Allah lakum wa kulu wa shrabu hatta itabain lakum khaytul abiyad min khaytul aswad min fad. Summa atim siyam ilal ilal leil. Wala tu bashru huna wa antum aykafuna fil masajin. Tilka hududullah." Allah said your wives should not come to you when you are in the seclusion of the what? Of the, uh, of the eight calf. So that they don't spoil your eight calf for you. Mm -hmm. You say, I'm longing for not seeing you, etc. and what have you. But when you are always at home with her, she quarries with you. Especially when you are always with her, you are at home with her, she quarries with you. Especially when you always remain at home, budget will be coming in. Budget of this, budget of that, budget of this, budget of that. But if you want to be safe, leave the house immediately for her so that you don't continue to receive uh, some addendum of the budget. But nowadays, they, they too used to do what we call pardon. So it's not, not something new. I'm sorry, my mother said. Is this so? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Maybe because they have the defense mechanisms, that's why. <laughs> now, Allah's one of Allah told us that He had made the mosque a place of dwelling and a place of eight calf. Even in Surah Al Hajj, He said that. And in, in, in Surah Al um, Baqarah, He also told us about Ibrahim and Islam, Ismail. وَإِسْ يَرْفَوْ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْبَيْتَ وَإِسْمَائِلَ رَائِدًا مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَائِلَ رَبَّنَا تَقْبَلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ سَمِيُّ دُعَاءَ Isn't it? No. وَعَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ أَمْ طَهِرَ بَيْتَ لِطَاعِفِينَ وَلَعَاكِفِينَ وَالْرُكَّ يَسْجُودَ That's why I'm coming to the issue of Itikaf. So Itikaf is very important in Islam. And it gets you more attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is better for us to at least be at two, three nights for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or two, three days to be secluded in the mosque. Nobody will disturb you. 
you now have free time to interact with your Lord. Free time to pray much more better. Free time to supplicate unto Allah and answer your prayers. So the last 10 days or the last 10 nights were the ones that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to observe the I'itikab. Aisha radiallahu anha reported and many other sahabas that the Prophet throughout his life would not leave I'itikab throughout his life, throughout his life until when he went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the end of the day, even his wives decided to follow suit. They too were being I'itikab seclusion in the mosque of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some used to observe them in their own rooms, and it is also legal. Scholars are of the view that women can do it in their own rooms or in their own homes. She can tell her husband that I want to enter into it into my room for three or four days without coming out. So at that time, you need housemates, or if you have children, they can take over from her. If she wants to go to the mosque, then you, you will also allow her to go to the mosque if it is secure. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do not prevent the woman from going to the mosques of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Umar told us that كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعتكف العشر أواخر من رمضان This is contained in Bukhari volume 2 Hadith 713 The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to observe the eight car throughout the month of Ramadan in the last uh, 10 days So you can see how important it is for somebody to enter in, into eight car But what are the conditions of for entering into eight car? One, you must be a Muslim Two, you must have the consciousness. You should not be somebody who is innocent. Three, you must be purified from all what? Um, from from uh, Janaba, Nifas, and Haid as well. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyya lazina amanu la taqrabu salatu antul sukara hatta ta'lamu ma taqulun wa la junaban illa abiri sabilin hatta taqtasilu. None of you should come closer unto the mosque except uh, except you know what you are saying and none of you should enter into mosque or pass by through it except uh, 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 none of you should come closer to the mosque when you are intoxicated except when you know what you are saying and uh, none of you should pass through it except he or she is clean so one should be purified from high should be purified from janaba one should be purified from nifaz as well but if it is istikhar, then women can also go into the seclusion and make eight a calf. Part of what we are expected to know, oh my brothers, in this very great night, is number one, I have listed almost the impact of what we are going to feel at the end of the day to at least ten or more than that. Let me see where I listed them so that maybe if someone wants to at least take a out of it, he or she can take um, a lesson out of it. Okay. Number one is the closeness to Allah in worship. Closeness in Allah, the closeness to Allah in worship. Why? Because Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطَيْمُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الرَّزَاقُ ذُلْكُ وَتِلْمَتِينَ I have not created both the Jews and the mankind except they should worship me. مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ I don't expect them to enrich me with any satisfaction I don't, I, don't, I don't also expect them to feed me because Allah doesn't eat. Why? Inna Allah wa al-Razaqul Matin. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of all sustainers that provide provisions for all of us. So, what is expected of us as Muslims in these very days that remain is to be more devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. More devoted to Allah in charity givings, more devoted in Allah in simplicity, more devoted in Allah in humbleness.
more devoted in Allah in the recitation of the glorious Quran, more devoted in Allah in dua, more devoted in Allah in istighfar, more devoted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in askar. More, 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 more of all good deeds. That is why I said what I'm saying now is we all know about it, but we are just reminding ourselves. And Allah told us that we should remind ourselves. Now remind yourself for that remind, remembrance, remind, remind that always benefit the uh, the believers. Number two, I've made that mention of that to be more devoted in prayers. Number three, rising throughout the last ten days of this of, of, of the month for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us go through this very verse. It is a very long verse, but I'll read it from the beginning to the end, and then we we'll take out the lessons from it. You all know the verse. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Inna Rabbaka ya'lam annaka takumu adna min sulusay al-layli wa nisfahu wa sulusahu wa ta'ifatu min al-lazina ma'ak. Wallahu yukaddiru al-layla wa al-nar. Alima allan tuhsu fataba alaykum fakara umma tayisra min al-Qur'an. Alima an sayakun minkum marda wa akharuna yadribuna fil ardi yabtaguna min fadlillah wa akharuna yukatiluna fi sabiilillah fakara umma tayisra min. وأقيم الصلاة وأتى الزكاة وأقرض الله قرضا عزنا وما تقدموا لأنفسكم من خير تجدوا عند الله هو خير وأعظم أجر واستغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم. الله سبحانه وتعالى says in this very chapter in this very verse that surely your Lord knows that you pass in prayer nearly two thirds of the night and some sometimes half of it and sometimes a third of it. And also a part of those with you, a party of those with you, and Allah measures the night and the day. He knows that you are not able to do it, so He has <coughs> He has turned to you mercifully. Therefore, read what is easy for you of the Quran. He knows that there must be among you the six and others who travel the land for seeking the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and others who fight in the course of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is jihad jihad way therefore read as much as it is easy for you and keep up prayers and pay the poor rate and after and pay the poor rate and offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a gift and whatever of, of grants you send on beforehand you shall meet it in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Seek for his forgiveness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of forgiving of merciful. Let's go to the lesson of the chapter of the verse. Inna Rabbaka Ya'lam, Allah knows that you used to be steadfast in the night of the portion of it. And nakata kum adna min sulisa yillayl. Sulisa is one third of the night, isn't it? Pray into the other night. Who dare do that amongst us today? Kuraka woman mad ayke chikindar ziyana bina anna. They can't ayke tayin. Allah is a lie. Yang kepada damar mari saya akan azuki awak from 100 to 97, 97 to 95. Before you know it, you only have two, 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 two
of those before us laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana so let us copy and emulate the left side of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is why part of the impact of what we are discussing today is you and i should make a covenant to allah from today that i have taken it upon myself daga yau din nan zan dinga yin raka'a biyu ko wani dare cikin 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 sauran rayuwata just to to what to rakat or if you think you can add to four or six or ten alhamdulillah because ahabul amali ila allah adwamaha wa in qal the beloved word or deeds to the side of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is which you are steadfast and you are permanently doing it you've not stopped allah knows those that used to wake up in the night and supplicate unto him the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us that when it is the last segment of the night allah would descend to the world to the lower part of the world and say where are those that are seeking my glories where are those that are supplicating unto me where are those that are seeking for my forgiveness shall forgive them by that time you are trying to change your gear four to five what do you think you are doing spare some part of your night that is precious allah wanted you to give him that time while others are sleeping you are now conversing with allah how would you feel when his excellency invited you to come and see him in the night when nobody is there except you and him you feel flabbergasted as the idea of meeting this excellency the kinesi wallahi tallahi wa ma'lam mun ina magana ina cewa kaza part of your own lord allah deserve more than that I think I'm right. So let's be a some part of the night. Take it as a lesson that from today on, even if you are not good in solving, start practicalizing it. But I know alhamdulillah all of you that are here are bona fide humble servants of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala that are good in resurrecting in the night and pray to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. So number number 4 is we have what we say to seek for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by oft saying allahumma innaka afuwun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'f anni or by seeking for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allahumma ighfir li allahumma arhamni no one has told us informed us about the richness of this world fa qultu astaghfiru rabbakum innahu kana ghaffara yursil as-samaa alaykum dirara So even if you want to pray supplicate all unto Allah be, be oft seeking for forgiveness of Allah Allah will give you rain If you are looking for a child if you are looking for a position if you want to be a senior advocate of Nigeria or senior advocate of Africa if you have it Keep on to the istighfar Allah will open that door for you Allah will open that door for you. It is easy in the sight of Allah. Wa ma zalika ala Allah bi aziz. It is not difficult in the sight of Allah. Nothing is difficult in the sight of Allah. Ah, any one of you the only position you want to attain is to have to become a son and a lad venture. Ko ba ka mani? We in the academy the only thing we are looking for is to become what? Shine ni malike ne na rogon da Allah kusani da. I'm about to our promotion is around the corner. They are just taking up over the child now. And from doctor we move to associate. And from associate you move to the professor. She can they want you to prophet to prophesy the world that this is what is going to happen in the 20 years to come of education. Do kariya ci. Ah. To translate the lessons learned during the Ramadan fast for the rest of your own life to re- to reflect and ponder in the tafsir you have listened to during the month of the ramadan we've not been taking it into cognizance that, that tafsir is very important and a segment of the glorious quran because you cannot understand the proper message of the quran except to the exegesis of the quran that's the tafsir that is why it is important for you to listen 
to tafsir in the, in, in, in the radio or to go to the tafsir places and listen to the man, to the, to, to the land scholars over there. So that you can gain a lot of what? Of lessons from what you have been hearing the Imam recycle or you are reciting yourself. Many of us used to recite the glorious Quran without knowing the knowledge or without knowing the meaning. That is why we don't cry, we don't shed tears. But have we known the message contains in them? Many times do we cry while we are, we, are, we are reading the Quran. To seek for Allah's mercy, forgiveness, and emancipation for, for hell fire in this month, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those that have been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should also see that the month of Ramadan is a training ground for the worship of Allah and devotion. And uh, we should also have it at the back of our mind that when we fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as promised by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa let the Rayyan gate be the gate we are going to enter into paradise with. And we should also have it at the back of our mind that the month of Ramadan is a renew of the message of Islam to humanity. Why? Because he said in it, the message, the Quran was revealed as a guidance to humanity. And it is a month that symbolizes unity and harmony among what? Among Muslims throughout the world. Let us all see that after the month of Ramadan, you don't stop fasting. When in an Yamatu, when in the kitchen, she went to the Ramadan, and she came on Yadin as a Missy Pony Ramadan. A mother has a place in fifty thousand years, actually, two hundred as a milk quana days are about fifty thousand. Everybody will fast every day. Well, I tell you, madam, because Nigerians love money more than any other thing you can think of. But the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Whosoever fast for one day, for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa taala will distance his face from hellfire of a distance of 70, 70 kilometers. Seventy kilometers, you cannot see even a hellfire." If you think you can see traitor from here, then you can see the headfire. For instance, it's close to 70 kilometers, isn't it? To Allah, it didn't come as a new granite, they are coming for his own sake. They visited the gate, the Ainu Mutan, its own shake, the Abana, its own kilometers, Sabain, Old Shekara Sabain. Okay, what do you want? For me, I like it. Robbie Kuma to Kaziban. Which of the bounties of Allah SWT will you now deny? Then, the Ramadan fast should also be an encouragement for you to give out charity all the times for that givers never lack. The more you give, the more you get. That's why you have 200 descendants every day. One is say, Allahumma a'ati munfikan khalafan. The other is say, Allahumma a'ati munfikan talafan. Oh Allah, give back to me who that gives. Oh Allah, uphold, withdraw from that that withdraw from his own as well. If you are a miser, a niggard, what would our word can I qualify it? A stingy person. A moral chinakar she. So if you refuse to give Allah, Allah will never give to you as well. You see, I'm mixing both English and Hausa. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, having talked about charity giving, within these days, we are expected to give out charity, zakat al fitr. It is a charity of marking the end of the Ramadan fast. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the one who sunnatized it in the second year to be given to the poor and the needy. For one sa'i to one person of the needy or a poor, or four would the Nabi equivalent to one sa'i to one person of the needy, of a grain, or a date, or a shair that is wheat, or even if it is meat that you take, or even if it is a cheese that you eat in your own community. Now let us ask ourselves if you are going to give out the charity, 
Which of the graces are you expected to give out charity? Is it the millet? Rice. Rice. Because it is the most preferable food that we eat daily. I'm not even Bible say I don't suck. I don't suck. I suck. I suck. Say I don't eat meat. Don't suck. I 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 don't suck. I'm sure I'm safe when I sit in Bui because I'm in the midst of the lawyers. The when you take me to court, they will, they will defend me. Yes. Right. Everything subsidy, no subsidy. So even the rice has no subsidy now. That's why we are talking about it. Well, I'm man, it's unfortunate that we are about to witness a period that we cannot eat rice in our homes. Come on, rice. Okay, okay, she covered up. Okay, they saw you. Yes. Now my husband is shaking and he's not even telling me. When you take it to your home, you can't even go in the bathroom. Well, I was thinking about it. She's not even. But anyway, my husband is coming back. I didn't say any money. She cannot go out. Well, I'm not. I have a paradigm shift. Don't you think? I'm not even shaking. I'm not even going to the bathroom. Kau hidup kau macam ikan, kau 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 cakap Alhamdulillah, kau cakap apa? Eh, Indo minat dah ke saya mera dah, si mai blokin, si bagetti mai blokin. So which one? When you come to buy eggs, they say three thousand seven hundred. Nak kelir tu ramah macam something. Come on, kang kanan, we buy one. There was a time I bought one, over one thousand naira. Eh. Come on, get on the man. I'm not much. Where are we heading to? I'm okay. Look, my love, I'm not sure. I'll keep my mouth open. Don't leave me. I'm not even kidding. Inshallah, that is all. So, if we go to this kiyama, Allah zina amu ni da Allah zina kafur. Da Allah zina na fufu ni. Now they open gate for us to go to the paradise. You that accrue money in trillions and others, you stay there and then answer questions. <laughs> so please don't forget to give out the cattle fitter two days to the expiration of the Ramadan fast or on the day of the uh, Salat al Fitr before you go to the mosque. Because the Prophet said, Whosoever gives out the Zakat al Fitr after coming back to the mosque is just an ordinary Sadaqa. It's not going to be accepted, accepted in the sight of Allah. And what is the essence of it? He said, Uratun Lusaimi Mina Rafas. It is a cleanse for you for what you have misdeed during the month of Ramadan. Maybe you've watched televisions, you've done this, you've done this, which you are not supposed to do. Because you are supposed to symbolize the Malaika now. That lie as soon as Allah Amaram, we have Allah the Mighty Maru. Allah knows that we are weak, and that is why He is created in that form. He created us in that form. So He wanted now to expiate all the sins we have done during the month of Ramadan, so that our Ramadan fast will be what accepted fully in His sight. Secondly, for what the Masakin, it is going to be a food feeding for the what for the needies and the poor. The Prophet Sallallahu said, prevent them from going about to seek for what? To beg that day. Because it is a day of joy. Because it is a pass it to somebody. Let him get. All you need to do is to dress in your what? Best regalia and go to the mosque and then get that very forgiveness of Allah SWT that day. So let us see how we can be able to redeem that very permission, um, that very order of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or his commandment during these days. May Allah SWT is it for us as well. Yeah. Lastly, what I want to talk about is that after the Ramadan fast, it has been enjoined by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that 
whosoever fasts six fasts in Shawwal. And then follow it with the one that you are fasting during the month of Ramadan of 30 days or 29. Allah is going to give you a reward of somebody who has fasted for the whole year. Man sama Ramadan is the man at Bahu be sitting in Shawwal for Kama Sama Dahra Kundu. Okama Kalar Susanullah Hadi Sadam. So let us see to you that the moment you are true from the Ramadan fast, spare some days within that very month of Shawwal. Six, um, first six days, you know, uh, concurrently or uh, intervally. Make sure that this six is made before the expiration of the month of Ramadan or of Shawwal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you a reward of what? Somebody who has fasted for the whole year. Can we do that? Can we do that? Are we willing to? May Allah accept our ibadat and tell me. Finally, I want to take this time because I'm not going to, to talk much. I've already you know, discussed the whole segments of what I wanted to discuss about, about the significance of the last 10 nights and uh, the impact of it that we are going to you know, learn from the lessons we've been taught in these very days by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and as, by, as directed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the next thing for us now is for us to remain as brothers in Islam. To see ourselves as one. If we agree to fast during the month of Ramadan as brothers and sisters, then wherever we meet or we meet after the Ramadan fast, we should also see ourselves as one, as one in that unification. Remember the saying of Allah, wa tasimu bi abdillahi jami'an wa la tafarruq. Al-Iqtisam hiya means al-Islam. Do not be divided. Wazguruni matallahi alaykum iskuntum a'adaan fa'alla fabayna qulubikum fa'azba'atum bi ni'mati ikhwan. Remember when you were all enemies fighting one another. And he now at the end of the day put you all together, bounded you together as one brothers and sisters. And remember you were at the brink of falling into the hellfire when Allah saved you from it for making you new Muslims. So let us see to it that we emulate the lifestyle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the rest of our life to emulate the Sahabas by practicalizing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam step by step. That's why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala presses those that um, Follow the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Qadkana Dukum Fi Rasulullah Uswatun Hasnatun Liman Kana Rujullah Wulmurul Akhir Wa Zakrallah Nasirah May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make God among those who are thus glorified Allah most often and also follow the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make us to attend the taqwa he wanted from us because he said La Allahum Tattakun that you may have the piety of Allah So as you have the piety of Allah for not drinking, eating in the hidden so may also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our faith to fear him both inwardly and outwardly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. May he forgive me of my own shortcomings. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, reward us for listening to this very short message of mine. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi And he uh, do justification for the topic. Thank you. Jazakallahu uh, khairan. Before we open the door for the question, comments, an observation. Uh, let me recognize the presence of my Lord, who happened to be the pillar of Mulan in Sokoto. Uh, he makes sure that every year he will only sponsor iftar for Mulan. So he's part and parcel of people who sponsor staff from Mulan. Uh, it's now number three in the judiciary of Sokoto State. My Lord Justice Kabir Hamad, you are highly welcome, my Lord. Uh, I was uh, informed by our chairman of today's uh, program, His Worship. Uh, Nora Muhammad Belu, that uh, my Lord will now take over as the chairman 
of today's uh, program. My Lord, you are highly welcome, sir. Assalamu alaikum, my Muslim brothers and sisters. <clears throat> I'm very grateful, Mr. Chairman, for this honor given to me now. However, I would like to state it. I don't and I will never ever shun or run away from any responsibility given to me. But I would like to say three things. Number one, it is not proper if there is anything that has been arranged to be changed abruptly or impromptu. The fact that already there is a chairman who from the beginning of this session or from the beginning of this lecture and he is present, the fact that uh, somebody who is higher than him in position or in statue is around should not be a ground for changing that uh, arrangement. Number two, <coughs> if I go to other side of the law, you know it's not allowed to spring a surprise not only to orphanan and to any other person. So by giving me this honor, you are springing surprise to me. Thirdly and most importantly, the chairman of this occasion is more learned in Islam than I. And he was here earlier, so I believe he will be in better position to moderate the, <clears throat> the questions that are going to be put and also to say a word or two in respect of the paper which has just been presented. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. We thank my Lord for the wisdom. The word of Eda is a word of uh, wisdom. Uh, before I hand over the microphone to the chairman so that he can call whoever has a question or observation, I recognize the presence of the mother of the lawyers in Sokoto. Uh, uh, you see, I always address her as a mother of the lawyer, Adia Aisha Dansofo, MNI. You are highly welcome. Uh, our guest lecturer for the fortnight's public lecture we had here, Dr. Yunus Abdullah, Abdullah Yunus, he promised last time, that is last two weeks, that he will make sure that he attend the public lecture of Mola and he fulfilled the promise. You are highly welcome. Uh, and we are still waiting for your second promise, inshallah. And he promised that any time Mulan is fighting for later, he will not hesitate to come. So, Jazakallah uh, Khair. At this uh, junction, let me hand over the microphone to the chairman so that they can call upon anybody who has an observation, question for the topic they discuss with us. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I firstly wish to congratulate the discussant for deliberately this justifying the task given to him. You have indeed done well to the topic given to you and may Allah reward you and us that listen to you patiently. Secondly, I Initially, wanted to decline being the chairman of this session, not really because I was asked to, but as lawyers, we are bound by seniority in both our public and private life. His Lordship, Honorable Justice Kiai Ahmad, is before me here, and I was the chairman before him when he came. By virtue of being him my senior, not even uh, uh, in the legal profession as a lawyer, but on the bench as a high court judge and maybe a magistrate, I decided to give him the, the lead. But now that my Lord graciously decided to say no, I will not insist. I will continue to be the chairman of the session for us to round it up. That is by doing. Yes, thank you very much, sir. And 
Now that we have come to the end of the session for now, we will now declare open the floor for questions, answers, or even observation from the members or from the, the participant, please. So the floor is now hereby open for question, observation, and even recommendations, please, if there is any. Please. Thank you very much, sir. Anybody with question? Ms. Bella. Is in relation to the topic of today. Some ulama are of the opinion that if you have been consistently observing Asham prayers and Tahajjud at the same time, and eventually on the night of Laylatul Qadr, you miss Subuh prayer in congregation. That means you have lost all the benefit of Asham. Tahajjud and, and also that very night of the little cut. That is my first question. I want Sheikh to shed more light on it. And the second question, sir. Can someone observe is more outside the topic of today, but I want to take the opportunity to ask the question. Can somebody observe Subu Freya in his home or in his house for security reasons? For security reasons, sir. Thank you very much. Bismillahir Rahmanir. Um, he posed two questions. One has to do with the night of Qadr, that eventually, if one misses Zor, Salat al Zor, that is uh, date of that day, or he is missing the night of the Qadr. That is not true, because we are talking about the night of the daytime. Mind you, are you getting my point? What the scholars are emphasizing on is that when it is the night of Qadr, you are expected to pray both Maghrib and Isha in congregation. Why? Because it is then that they are now descending down to take records, not the daytime. Because it is said night, Layla. And Layla begins with the what? With the fall of the night, not during the daytime. However, it is not. Uh, recommendable or sensible of a man to always be losing one salad or the other in congregation. But for you to miss the night of the Qadr simply because of missing the Zul prayer is not true. You understand? Yes. What is meant is the part of the night of that very day, not the daytime. Then the secondly about saying that you should pray in your home for security reasons except if you are in a land whereby Islam is not the, the major religion whereby if you decided to come out and pray publicly they may kill you then you can pray in your home otherwise you remember the case of um, a blind person of the sahaba that came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that my house is far from your mosque and i have no guide to guide me down to the mosque so can i pray in my own home the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says you can then after having left and changed the alayhi salam communicated to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that anybody that hears the azan must answer the call of Azan and come to the mosque and pray. Do you understand? That's why Allah praises those that now used to always keep alive the mosque. He says that um, uh, in Tawbah that in the Maya Amun Masajid Allah, Man Amun Billahi Wal Yom Al Akhir. Those that used to keep alive the Masajid are the ones that believe in Allah and the last day as well. So it is expected of you to come to the mosque and pray. But to what extent is the security hitches or security threat? We have our lawyers here, if you are not one of them. So you can tell us the gravity of the security threat and then we <laughs> try to be <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Because uh, like uh, what he was trying to ask, the current situation we have in the country or in Sokoto. Just last week at Kwanawa, a boy coming out uh, after Subi prayer was kidnapped. And up to now, he has not been released. There was an attempt by the family uh, to try to uh, help him out of the situation because they, they were, the family was contacted. They were contacted by the phone number of the kidnappers and they did not pick the phone. And then later on, they used the boy's phone.
to call the parents. And when they answered, they said they would punish him severely because they called them earlier on and they did not pick. And of recent, in Sokoto metropolis, there are a lot of kidnaps going on after Ishai, after Subi, during Tajud. So there's, there's a lot of things that are happening that people are not aware of. And that's why I think maybe he asked that question. You know, um, in this situation, we just make a comparison with uh, the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Let's assume that we are now in a time of war. Muslims should strategize themselves, if such being the case. Some should serve as security guard for them while they pray, and some should continue to pray. When those are up from prayers, the other ones should go out praying, and then they should keep vigil. But it is not a reason, just because of kidnappers, that you should not go to the mosque and pray. No time shall people give up, give up prayers. Even in, during the, the time of war, you are expected to pray congregationally as men. As men. That is what made you men. This community of yours is one, so therefore worship none, none except me. So we cannot forsake our prayers for this very element and the underworld element that we should go and be, be, be lying in our homes. Even in your home, they can come and pick you. Do you understand? So, so why then do you think yourself? But the only thing for the Muslims now is for them to strategize themselves if the government cannot provide security for them. Wallahi, you don't make a damn make a bar, make make a tonkare so. I can cook can, I bet now cook can make cook can cook la. Now the game Allah Rahman Rahim is about. Let's talk about something that you and I don't know. Since Jesus came on the earth again, I'm not going to limit to everything. I think security is not a dead end. But even security threat is not a dead end. Can you hear me? But there are underground and underneath interest in them. How do you expect? When you stole somebody's phone now, you can be tracked by the DSS and others within four minutes. But they cannot track their, their phone numbers. But can you have a chain? Let us tell ourselves the truth. How do you expect that if somebody is taken to CIA under the scene, somebody will go and bail him out before you know it? Because what can I say, shy it? I don't know, you won't get kidnapped. Let's be sincere. How many lives do they have that we don't have? And they will take you to the bush and be threatening your life for, for nothing. One of our colleagues will cut now, Carson. They spend five days without eating. They will give him one kuli and roll as they feed. They divide one bottle of minerals and then give them. Until one they collected ransom from them, 5.5 million naira. In addition to Bajaj, they will tell you where to go and buy the Bajaj. When you arrive, they say, okay, Monsanka is a young zone. Kabai she 1.4 million naira. I can't say the Bajaj in there. It then comes to get deep on the Zaka again. Is that about Kalamba Shu? Ask yourself these questions. Complain is anyone lying. Don't cook your matric no abundant treating cases. So, but who job to Mutsu Zambal Sala does about the Mutsia Tumba? What did the what did the, 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 the people of for said to him at the end of the day? When he was massacring them, oppressing them, they say in the matter the has in Hayatu Tunya. You are only going to judge this world. One, let's go to the next world. Anybody that visited Egypt today can go and see the body of Pharaoh. He's still lying there. I went and saw him naked. I say, here you are. This is your final abort. So, man, carry my money. That they don't want the theory. No, we just have to buy it. No, 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 so, do you need a chicken motor? Can I get you? Ah, go to Kobe. Okay, then go to the one. I can't move so much. I'm not allowed to lie. When the when the loan is back, I'm not going to make money. That's all. But when the loan is back, I'm not going to make money. I'm not going to make money. Allah is my God. Thank you very much. We run out of time, but okay. The honourable DPP. I have to allow the PP. Of Ozabin, the shit to Shawal. Because 
some malams are saying that the fasting has to be continuous for those six days and some are saying at your leisure time once it is within the the month there is no problem so if there is any preferred way of observing the sheet to shawal please we want more information thank you yeah. yes. okay come now a job well known. Thank you, sir. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and increase you in knowledge. Uh, sir, in the course of your presentation, we were taught that in the paradise there is a door or a gate being referred to or called Raya. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, nobody will enter paradise through that door except the person who observed or fasted the month of Ramadan. So there is one question regarding this hadith that has been inundating my mind. That since the Prophet wasallam said, nobody enters paradise through this door of Rayyan except the person who performed the fasting of Ramadan. Does this mean that even the person who not observe the fast, uh, the fasting of the month uh, of Ramadan can still uh, enter paradise through other doors? Okay, let me, sp let me start with uh, Adia's question, which wants me to clear more air about uh, fasting concurrently or co um, continuously, chronologically, after the Ramadan fast. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given you the liberty and chance to, fight in, to, to fast any way you like. You can fast concurrently for the six days, or you can fight breakingly in between. You understand? It is not uh, obligatory for you to do that. It is recommendable that you do any of the two and Allah will reward you. The only thing that is expected for you is to get that very six fast days of, of fasting days of the shawwal so that you will get the reward of fasting for one year. Coming to my brother's uh, uh, question that um, what about in the case of those that do fast other days apart from the Ramadan fast? The Ramadan fast is the one exclusively meant that you will be called from that VIP gate of the Rayyan. While the remaining of the fast, the Prophet ﷺ told us that in the day of judgment, every day of a human being will be torched and will be rewarded or will be chest, chest out from it, except the voluntary fast that you used to fast. That one, Allah Taala will keep it for you without touching it. The remaining fasting days of yours of the other months, is for you to have other rewards in the sight of Allah so that you don't enter into what? Into hellfire. There is a person that the Prophet asks about that do you know who is a power power? In, in, in Hausa language, if we say this man is a Masiachi, I can eat a she. Somebody who has nothing, a bankrupt person, let me put it a simple language that you can understand. But when we say power power, we mean P L U P E R. Somebody who has nothing, he has been bankrupted. Maybe he has taken loan. How many of them can I say? Too much. Okay, Allah, Allah, kaso ka. So, kachi, kachi, shab, shab, kachi, CDL, kachi, na banking ka. Chawa ni kuma gawa ya chika. Nchwa na na la dubu dadi biya na ba masala. Ka kampoto. Aden de ukoda akaramu ya maka. Ba al ba shamba kum. I don't the code. I can't go and say table in case in it before the liminary house. I can say Tom. I just I've been to go pension in it. No, I come. I say double every case. I say to other Russian she can cut her shoes zero. This is power. I can go back money. So in the day of judgment, that as I'm eating what number two years old, the salah teach a kaka azmi, a kaka meni, a kaka. I'm been to go. She has she's alone one day. She's about to join one chance. She's kidnapping one chance. She's 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 about to join one chance. Do a rebel adventure. Such a to marry you. One nun, I need him laden as men derig in the cause at Duba, a summer at Ambashi, Abundance Sam. Cocum at Ocos and the Soran about the Kampatamashi, I should get the Shutaka by Kedala Sadim. So for a Muslim and a dedicated person who fasts other days, is not going to be called from this very gate. But the very special one is that of the Ramadan fast. 
according to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wallahu a'lam. Uh, Atakbir. Uh, we thank. Uh, uh, you are still raising up. Uh, uh, the time is not in our side. Okay, please come. Come, but uh, you have to be here uh, because we are working with the time. <laughs> so do it. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Okay. So I, I have a little problem, which I know the problem is peculiar. Uh, when a man cannot ascertain how much he has earned for a year, for, for a whole year, what can he do to ensure that he did not give less zakat? I don't, I, I don't, I, I cannot ascertain how much I have earned for a whole year within the Islamic uh, calendar month that I intend to give zakat. How do I go about it to ensure that I did not give less zakat? It's very simple according to scholars. All you need to do is to put up all your words together, make calculations from maybe if you are, can you hear me? Okay, maybe if you are banking with First Bank and you have one million there, Access Bank two million there, and you are having some wealth that um, just like what do I call them, mortgage wealth that could amount to three million, then you put all the amounts together, and then you now give out the zakat out of the wealth. If you have buses or cars that are applying the road for you for commercial purposes, and you know what you have been saving. For the period of one year now, put up the money all together and then give out the zakat out of the shikhe now. I hope I'm answered your question. Income. Yes. The income you want 50 million to 100 M. Then you want to complete the 100 M or 50 M. The income and give out the zakat. What you have earned for that year is what you are going to do. You don't work on assumption of what you are going to get in the, in the, in the year. What but what is on the ground. What has come in. Yes, what has come in is what you are going to give the zakat out of it. Do you understand? Yes. Yes, uh, we thank our guest, uh, guest lecturer. May Almighty Allah reward you abundantly. Uh, before, we, uh, the first chairman, the first chairman, oh, my Lord, the first chairman want to say something. Please. On board, sir. Ah, okay. Let, let me bring the details. And um, my learned brother here is saying, what if you get five million, one million? But um, from my own understanding, for zakat, I felt it's something that you have to keep for one year. Yeah. It's not like salary that we earn. Example: if my salary is more than one hundred plus or two hundred, the very day I collect it, I do what houses call tonton. Before you know it, after one, one hour, everything is finished. You don't expect me to remove the car out of it. That is one. Then two, um, sir, you, in the course of your lecture, you made mention of um, we Muslims don't have mercy on ourselves, that um, this ice block is being sold at 1,000 naira. Um, <laughs> sir, <laughs> I, I, I want to advise that uh, at every uh, tafsil gathering, I think before the expiration of the tafsil period, every day there should be a sermon on Muslims. I agree, we don't really um, pity ourselves. These blocks are being sold to those that sell it at 300 naira or 200 naira, and they end up selling it at 1,005. So I bought this block, myself I do produce it. But I bought it day before yesterday because I don't have light in my area. I bought it at 1,500 naira. When it's being sold to them at 200 or 300 naira. So I felt it's my own advice that um, at every tafsir um, uh, period, at the expiration of tafsir or before that, Muslims should be reminded that we should pity ourselves. Let's take from these Christians. If it's December, sir, they have this what they call sales. Just to make sure that even the poor among them are being carried along. 
Thank you. Sir. That he or she will be sending out this urban ice block when it is the Ramadan uh, first time, first period, so that that will question the effect of what of the expensiveness of the uh, ice block during the, the time. Secondly, about the issue of the zakat that our brother is talking about, maybe she made clarification. Now you have money in places differently, one million, three million scattered everywhere. But this one is not up to the time, if I, if I understand you. So the Sharia has allowed you to now lump sum all the money together. For instance, this one is only six months that you kept uh, one million in it. This one is eight, 12, and others. Then all you need to do is put up all the amount together now. And that's why Islam says it's allowed for you to draw back the zakat. Even if it is not time for it, simply because of the situation that Muslims found themselves to question that very effect. Do you understand? So you can do that at any given time when you have your money scattered everywhere, put them together and then give out the zakat of that very year. Allah SWT will reward you for that. Number two, um, what we are trying to say is that, <clears throat> like she, says, she rightly reiterated in an airport, Wallahi, we have to be sincere with ourselves. We are not, we are not sympathetic with ourselves. You see what happened, or you saw what happened just recently during the month of Ramadan. Few days to Ramadan, a lecture was held at Kasarawa to our business tycoons in the state. Don't Allah kusasabta, don't Allah kusasabta. They refused. Now what Allah did at the end of the day, فَطَافَ عَلَيْهِمْ طَائِفٌ مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَهُمْ نَائِمٌ for us, Bahad Kassarim. You see how fire has gutted the, the market at the end of the day. And nobody dares sympathize with them simply because they too are not sympathizing with others. Why is it that when it is our own festivities, we try to skyrocket everything? Is it the only one that we are going to be rich? Watch also and see when it is during the, uh, the, the uh, Salat al Adha. All the animals and ships will, will be what? Will be expensive in nature. So if you don't become sympathetic to others, Allah will not be sympathetic to you. Irhamu man fil abdi, irhamukum man fil sama'a. So when you are sympathetic and massive to others, Allah will be massive to you as well. And it is a part of riba for somebody to buy something of 200 naira and sold it at the rate of 1,500. What is again there? 1,300. Where did you go from here to, 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 to go and buy it? How much did you spend in the, in, in the vehicle to go and buy it? We thank uh, our guest lecturer. Uh, in order to practicalize what we thought during this uh, Ramadan, uh, our guest lecturer, Dr. Abdullah Yunusa, taught us here yeah, that whenever we have gathering like this, whenever we want to hand it, we should pray. Because part of the time, the Almighty Allah, we accept prayer. So, and we are going to put it into practical. The same lecturer, Dr. Abdullah Yunusa, will lead us in prayer to close this thing and uh, he will give a powerful prayer for each and every one of us. Uh, before we call on our erudite scholar to lead us in prayer, uh, we have to have a foot of tank as usual and uh, in doing that uh, I have a special request from some of our members to specially thank His Lordship Justice uh, Kabir Hamad that my Lord did uh, that uh, we cannot even count it Many of our members, some are not here, some are here. They are able to testify that uh, during this Ramadan, my Lord did it marvelous for them. May Almighty Allah reward you, sir. May Almighty Allah reward you, sir. Uh, these are the, my Lord already put into practical. 
the lecture delivered today, my Lord already put it to practical. May Almighty Allah still assist you to continue in that way, sir. Uh, on this note, let me call the chairman to come and give the foot of thank briefly. Yes. yes. With the permission of my chairman, I have a daughter who is very curious and passionate to become a lawyer. If you want to become a lawyer, go and read properly because it is not a joke. It's not a field of joke, you know. So, yes, you have to be quoting sections and subsections and subsections. But she is bent on becoming a lawyer. So, I pray, inshallah, one day I shall come to see her here while I'm alive. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, we, have, we have all the cause to thank Allah for sparing our lives today. We have started uh, these lectures like four, four weeks ago. Alhamdulillah, all the lecturers have done marvelously to the lecture, lectures given to them, by the traffic given to them. And also, we have every cause to thank Allah for sparing our lives today. Because everything has beginning, tomorrow has an end. Alhamdulillah, we have uh, scheduled four lectures within this month. Alhamdulillah, today is the last lecture we have in this month of Ramadan. May Allah, in His infinite mercy, spare our lives to more Ramadans in good health and takawa. For our lecturers, Dr. Ablai Nusa, who delivered lectures uh, like two weeks ago, I was and also he is here with us today. We are looking forward to see him, inshallah, to continue with the good work he has been doing. And for the today's lecturer, Dr. Ablahi Kulam, may Allah reward you abundantly. May your dream of your daughter becoming a lawyer, may Allah make it easy for her. As you said, inshallah, wherever she is, um, will be part of us, we will, be, we will call you to deliver a lecture to us. And also, the, for the lectures you have just delivered to us, we are appealing to the lecturer maybe to send out a hard copy of the lecture so that it can be go around to the members of our group so that it will be beneficial to all members of our, uh, Mulan. May Allah reward you abundantly. As we come to this place simply, we pray Almighty Allah to take each and every one of us back to his ancestral destinations in good health. I mean, Subhana Rabbika Rabbi Adati Amai Sifun, Wa Salaamu Ala Musaleen, Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. As we all know, before Ramadan, we have a pre-Ramadan lecture for the Saturday that's uh, next to Ramadan. Then from the uh, beginning of uh, Saturday in Ramadan, I think today is the fifth lecture. No. We have pre-Ramadan lecture and we have four during Ramadan, making five. five. And we thank Almighty that make it possible for us. Now today, as we are rounding it up, we are going to have a special prayer from the special person, from Eruda Scholar, Dr. Abdullah Yunusa. Special prayer. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, before the prayers, inshallah, I would like to inform the gathering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of every language. Either it is Hausa, English, Arabic, French, Yoruba, and many other languages. Wa min ayatihi khalqu samawati wal ard واختلافي ألسنتكم وألوانكم إن في ذلك لا آية لقوم يتفكرون. الله سبحانه وتعالى said part of the bounties of Allah سبحانه وتعالى is the creation of the heaven and earth and the differences in your languages and the differences in your skin. These are the bounties of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. So any language you use in praying, Allah سبحانه وتعالى will surely listen to you. And he will accept it because he is the creator of the language. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reward of whatever thing we have had here and whatever thing we have done in the month of Ramadan. Sallu ala nabi al-Karim. 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والأفاف والغنى والمغفرة اللهم إنا نسألك إيمانا صالكا وإلما نافعا ورزقا واسعا وقلبا خاشعا ولسانا ذاكرا وبطنا صابرا وتوبة قبل الموت ومغفرة بعد الموت ونصيبا من الجنة ونجاة من النار برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب العالمين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا وحفظ أئمتنا وولاة أمورنا وأن كل ما سألناك ربنا أعطيتنا لك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد إذا رضيت ولك الحمد بعد الرضا ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين